Hello everyone, I am Xenzu C. Saladaga with Robin Dispo and today we will be discussing all about thermocouples. Here we have a thermocouple circuit. So a thermocouple is composed of at least two dissimilar metals joined together to form two junctions. One is connected to the body whose temperature is to be measured. This is the hot or measuring junction. The other junction is connected to a body of known temperature. This is the cold or reference junction. Therefore, the thermocouple measures the temperature difference between the reference junction and the measured junction. How does a thermocouple work? A strip of metal, as you can see here, which is constant tan, and another two strips of metal, as you can see here, which is copper. There are two biometallic junctions formed. One is this one, and the other is this one. This junction is heated by a candle, and the other junction is submerged in a container of ice water. As you can see, this meter gives a reading, and this reading is the voltage of two junctions. The voltage produced between the two junctions is called EMF or electromotive force. The voltage causes a current to flow when heat is applied to one of the junctions. The current will continue to flow as long as the two junctions are at different temperatures. How come that voltage or electromotive force are generated? The heat causes the molecules and the atoms to vibrate. This vibration is so tiny that you can't feel it in your hands. The excited atoms will allow their free electrons to move more easily and they will move towards the cooler end of the rod. This only occurs because there is a temperature gradient, a difference in temperature from one end to another. So at the cooler end, we'll have slightly more electrons than the hotter end and as electrons are negatively charged, we therefore get a slightly negative and positive charge ends of the rod. Going back to the setup, if we increase the temperature of the candle, the reading also increases. This increase of temperature also increases the potential difference. The potential difference is related to the temperature difference between the hot and cold junction. Working principles of a thermocouple. The working principles of a thermocouple is based on three effects. Zeebeck effect, filter effect, and Thomson effect. As you can see in the figure, one junction is heated and the other one is cooled. So therefore, there is an electromotive force generated between the junctions. This phenomenon was originally discovered by Italian scientist Alessandro Volta in 1794. But Thomas Johann Zeebeck rediscovered it in 1821. He observed that when wires made from two different metals were joined at each end and there was a temperature difference, between these ends. That small voltage potential was created at the junctions. Next is filter effect. It states that when two dissimilar metals form a closed loop, then when externally current forced to flow through the closed loop, then one junction will get heated and the other will become cool. So this is opposite to the Zeebeck effect. Lastly is Thomson effect. It states that a potential gradient exists even in a single conductor having temperature gradient. If a temperature gradient exists along any one metal or both the metal of thermocouple, then junction electromotive force may be slightly altered. Thus, this effect is called Thomson effect. Thermoelectric laws of thermocouples. We have three laws of thermocouples. Law of homogeneous circuit, Law of Intermediate Metals, and Law of Intermediate Temperatures. Law of Homogeneous Circuit states that a circuit of a single homogeneous wire cannot maintain a current by means of heat application alone. Here, the temperature of this junction is T1 and the other junction is T2. There is a temperature difference between these two junctions which is T1 minus T2. But the meter doesn't have a reading because these two junctions are made of same metals. Law of Intermediate Metals The net electromotive force in a circuit consisting of an interconnection of a number of unlike metals maintained at the same temperature is zero. This means that when another type of metal is connected to the junction, with the same temperature, the net electromotive force is still the same as if they were made up of two dissimilar metals. Then, come to the circuit. The first case is that T1 and T2 are the temperatures of the hot and cold junction respectively. Now, take the reading of the voltmeter. 
The second case is where the third metal is inserted in the circuit. This creates a two new junctions in the circuit. If T3 is the temperature of the new two junction, T1 and T2 are the temperatures of hot and cold junctions respectively. Now, take the reading in the meter. As you can see in these two cases, the readings are the same, which proves the law of intermediate metals. Law of intermediate temperatures. In a circuit of two dissimilar homogeneous wires, if one junction is maintained at one temperature and the other junction at another, the resulting thermal electromotive force will be independent of the temperature gradient along the wires. E1 is the voltage generated by the junction temperatures T1 and T2. E2 is the voltage generated by the te junction temperatures T2 and T3. E3 is the voltage generated by the junction temperatures T1 and T3. Therefore, E1 plus E2 is equal to E3. Devices used for measuring EMF. The amount of EMF developed within the thermocouple circuit is very small, usually in millivolts. Therefore, highly sensitive instruments should be used for measuring the EMF generated in the thermocouple circuit. Two devices commonly used are the ordinary galvanometer and voltmeter. Grounded junction thermocouples. At the tip of a grounded junction probe, the thermocouple wires are physically attached to the inside of the probe wall. This results in good heat transfer from the outside through the probe wall to the thermocouple junction. It is also noted that it has faster response times than ungrounded thermocouples. It is also recommended for the measurement of static or flowing corrosive gases and liquid temperatures and for high pressure applications. Finally, it is also noted that it is highly susceptible to noise induced by ground loops resulting in less accurate readings. Ungrounded Junction Thermocouples In an ungrounded probe, the thermocouple junction is detached from the probe wall. Response time is slower than the grounded style. It is usually recommended for measurements in corrosive environments where it is desirable to have the thermocouple electronically isolated from and shielded by the sheath. Also, it prevents electrical noise from interfering with the signal. Exposed Junction Thermocouples The thermocouple in the exposed junction style protrudes out of the tip of the sheath and is exposed to the surrounding environment. This type offers the best response time but it is limited to the use to non-corrosive and non-pressurized applications. It is mostly recommended for the measurement of static or flowing non-corrosive gas temperatures where the fast response time is required. Now that we finally know what a thermocouple is, Let's also take note that there are different types of thermocouple, each having an AS and I code. These types are J, K, T, E, N, R, S, U, B, G positive, C positive, and D positive. Now each of these have different alloy combinations, both positive and negative. These could also affect their maximum useful temperature range, maximum thermocouple grade temperature range, EMF over maximum temperature range, standard limits of error, special limits of error, international IEC, component bare wire. It is also likely noted that each thermocouple have different color codings for their thermocouple grade and extension grade. The thermocouple types are S, U, B, G positive, C positive, and D positive have no established thermocouple grade color code. It is also likely noted that B, G positive, C positive, D positive have no established international IEC. All information about the different types of thermocouples are all shown in the graph seen in the screen right now. Now that we're done talking about the different types of thermocouple, let's jump ahead to sample thermocouple readings. Let's say we use thermocouple type K in the measurement. The reading in the meter gives a 1.735 millivolt reading. Looking at the thermocouple chart for type K, thermocouple with a reference junction of 0 degrees Celsius, we have temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and 3 degrees Celsius. Add the two temperatures and we get the result 43 degrees Celsius. We also need to be mindful about the accuracy. The standard limits of error are used for the correction of the results. As you can see in the table, we have 2.2 degrees Celsius or 0.75% standard limits of error for type K thermocouple. First, convert the positive negative 0.75% tolerance, a positive negative degree Celsius value 
and compare with positive, negative 2.2 degrees Celsius. Multiply 42 degrees Celsius by 0.75%, this gives 0.32 degrees Celsius. We choose positive negative 2.2 degrees Celsius because it is greater than 0.32 degrees Celsius. So at 43 degrees Celsius, the accuracy of the type K thermocouple is positive negative 2.2 degrees Celsius.